Hi, I'm Suzy Larson. Here's the podcast from Suzy Larson Live. Enjoy the conversation. It's only just a matter of- You're listening to an encore presentation of Suzy Larson Live. Welcome to Susie Larson Live. Always so honored to get to spend this time with you. In fact, I look forward to bringing you conversations every single day that hopefully inspire you in your faith walk, that deepen your understanding of God's Word, and that heightens your awareness of His very real presence in your life. Well, today we're talking about one of my favorite topics, and I'm thinking you could probably guess what it is. Well, you're right if you guessed prayer. I love talking about prayer. I love actually praying. It's probably the most important thing about my whole walk of faith is the conversations I get to have with God and the things I get to listen to when he speaks to me through his word and through his whisper. Well, today we're talking to my friend Crystal Evans Hurst. We'll draw fresh fresh reflections from her book, The 28-Day Prayer Journey, A Daily Guide to Conversations with God. If you've ever heard Crystal speak, I'm telling you this girl can preach, and her books are always so rich. We've got a stack to give away. If you need a fresh angle for your prayer life, It's a really insightful book here, and you'll enjoy it. You can text the word book to get in on the drawing, 877-933-2484. Just a quick note, because we've got new listeners listening all the time. You really just want the word book. No exclamation point, no quotes around the word book. If it doesn't kick back a link to you, then you maybe I've added other characters that you don't want. Just the word book. You'll get a link, and then you just fill it out, and that puts you in the drawing. Quick announcement, Crystal is speaking at the Set Apart Conference uh, this weekend, along with Lisa Harper, whom you just heard me interview the other day. And the theme this year is drawn from Psalm 100, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. You're going to be reminded that God made you in his image, and when you're in Christ, you're his. Now, you may have already heard, but this is going to be the last year set apart. So do not miss your chance to experience this great conference. There are a couple of different ways you can attend. You can attend in person right here at the University of Northwestern at St. Paul this weekend, March 8th, 9th. There's also a virtual option. That means you'll get access to many of the speakers. So we have the keynotes, but you've got the breakout speakers, and that will be available from April 1st to May 31st. I know I just threw a lot of information your way, so you can find all the details and the workshop options or even register to visit Set Apart at setapartconference.com. That's setapartconference.com. All right, let me tell you about my guest. We'll get her on the show. Crystal Evans Hurst is the author of the best-selling She's Still There. She reaches millions of women each year speaking at conferences, sharing on her blog and podcast, writes for Proverbs 31's ministry, teaches at her home church as well. She also nurtures hearts and commands chaos as the chief operating officer of the Hearst household. She and her husband, Jesse, adore their three boys, their two adult girls, a son in love, and two grandchildren. You can keep up with Crystal and her journey at crystalevanshurst.com. I love this girl. Welcome back to the show, Crystal. Thanks so much for having me, Susie. I'm glad to be here with you. Looking forward to our conversation, and we love to start every day talking scripture, wondering if there's a passage you've been thinking about these days you can share with us. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's been a a difficult season. Um, And so that scripture, Psalm 34, where it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth, Um, meaning I'm making a choice to do it, even if I don't feel like it. And even if my circumstances are not inviting me to do so, that's what I'm choosing to do. Hmm. Are you able to share any of what's going on or not really? Oh, my goodness. 2020. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. Dumb question on live radio. You heard it here, folks. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, man. 2020, so but I also, yes. um, yeah. of course, am moving at the same time that I've had some challenges with health with my husband. I mean, you know, it's just mm. it's just yes, more of yes. 2020. But uh, yeah, it's just it's just mm. a crazy, crazy year. And um, I'm I'm grateful to be here, but it's a lot going. There's a lot going on. Indeed. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate that. Well, talk about how this, you know, there's a lot of books on prayer. Prayer is so important and there needs to be a lot of books on prayer, but you do have a fresh angle. Tell me about how it was first born in your heart. Yeah. Well, I don't have a problem praying. Like some people are, they don't know what to say to God or 
they don't know um, how to come if they're getting it right. I didn't feel that way. I just wasn't doing it. Like I just wasn't doing it consistently. So in the year where my sister Priscilla released a book on prayer, was in a movie about prayer, and then we were um, we had the opportunity to say goodbye to my grandmother that year. I mean, she was 97 years old and she was a prayer warrior. I just thought, girl, get your prayer act together. Like you just, you know what to do. You just need to do it and need to do it more consistently. So my goal was just to um, create a rhythm in my life that would allow me to develop consistency in prayer. And um, by doing that, it's, it's kind of like going to Weight Watchers every week if you tell them you're going to do it or you're supposed to be doing it and there's a check-in, then you'll, you'll be motivated or mindful about doing it. So I said to social media, Hey, Instagram, I'm going to talk about prayer for 28 days. I'm going to post a prayer prompt out of my time with God, my prayer time with God in hopes that it will help you. So I kind of built in some accountability so that I'd finish the 28 days. And at the end of 28 days, they, you know, the people who follow were like, this is great. Um, thank you for mul- I think I posted six times a day on Instagram for 28 days. This is awesome. Can you do it again? I said, well, not for 28. I'll do it for seven. And then I did it for seven. And then I did it for five. Then I did it for seven. And then somebody said, you know, there was a lot of content. Do you think it could be a book? And that was four or five years later. But the goal originally was I just need to pray and pray more consistently. And in doing that for myself, I think I helped a few other people. I think you did indeed. And it's really such a, there's times where I've seen books on prayer that make it so much more complicated than it was to begin with. And it's not (laughs) complicated, but you, I really feel like this is, these are guardrails for somebody who feels like they don't know where to start. So let's start with a kind of a quick overview using the prayer acronym, praise, repent, ask, yield. Let's talk them through just kind of a quick overview and then we'll break them down. So Monday is praise and thanksgiving, showing gratitude to God. Tuesday, Mm -hmm. repent, seek forgiveness from God. Wednesday, ask, present your request to God. Thursday, yield, surrender to God. Then talk about Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and how you add that on. Sure. Well, the goal is to take what you have been doing and to to live it out. And so you've got uh, Friday where you're praying for family and friends. Um, there's a, a dedicated time to talk to God about people who are meaningful to you. Saturday challenges to think outside the box. The same person who checks you out at the grocery store every every Saturday morning when you do your grocery shopping, it's to say to them, hey, um, can I pray for you? And then Sunday it's to remember your community of faith. So your pastor, the podcast person who you listen to all the time, the the, um, the radio show, and to think about them because they're they're feeding your heart and your soul and to remember them in prayer. Boy, that's fantastic. And that's the uh, Saturday. Oh, and Sabbath. That's the Sabbath prayers. Okay, so let's go uh, back up again. Monday, praise and thanksgiving, gratitude to God. Start there. Well, with praise and thanksgiving, praise and giving thanks, uh, and with each of these, if you can imagine that you are in a relationship with somebody, and if all you did with that person was ask, ask for what you want, that relationship would not be a very good it would be very one-sided because any relationship is going to involve more than just, I get what I want out of it. And so when we think about our relationships with our girlfriends or with our spouses, every now and then, even if you need something from them, you should come and just say, I think you're cool. You know, I'm glad you're my friend. Thanks so much for showing up for me. Thanks so much for being a great husband or a great wife. Thank you for making dinner. Um, you know what? I think you are really patient with the kids. Like those things are a part of building relationship and those things no less are part of our building relationship with God. And he's no less God. Like he actually is the creator of the universe is all things, the beginning and the end. He's sovereign, full of providence, wisdom, glory, holy, all these things. And we can just, you know, run down the list, but every now and then you just ought to say, I mess up so bad, so royally, and I am just in awe of how you have it together all the time. (laughs) Like Mm. you are just so holy, righteous, set apart. There's nobody like you. And I will spend eternity learning more about you. I am so in awe of you. That is praise. And when the, um, when we get too far away from gratitude, when we get too far away from honoring God for who he is, we quickly become ingrown and self-focused and complaining and finding things that are wrong. And so it's a good discipline to do this because it aids us in seeing who we are in, in retrospect to who God is. And that's helpful perspective to have. 
So good. Crystal, you know, I've walking, been walking through some just challenges as well, but something I've been sitting with with the Lord in the last few weeks that has made me feel like one of the richest people alive is the idea of all God has provided and all he's prevented. You know, I mean, I've spent time, I've been opening up my prayer time in the morning, worshiping and just going, there's so many things that have not happened to me that could have happened to me, you know, and just thanking him with all my heart. Oh, thank you, Lord, you know. And then for the ways that he's provided that I've gotten so used to that I would take for granted if I didn't just stop and go, wow, you know, how my washer works or whatever. And just by mm-hmm. just sitting in that with the Lord and just, just going, wow, you have been so good. And the things that I won't know, the near misses that I won't find out about until the other side, I want to thank you for now. It suddenly has made me feel so shored up, but we'd rush right past so much of his goodness, don't we? Mm -hmm, We do. And that's because we tend to be (laughs) self-focused. I mean, Mm. it it is an exercise. All these things that God is asking us to do is to be not just others focused, but to be God focused. But that's not our tendency. Our tendency is to be focused on what we want and how we want it. The children of Israel said to God, please get us out of Egypt, please. Then we'll forever worship you. And he did. And as soon as he did that, then they said, wait a minute, we're hungry. We want to eat the stuff we used to have, you know, we used to eat back in in Egypt. So he gave them manna. And then they said, thank you, but no thanks. We don't like that. We want some quail. I mean, you know, it was never ending. Um, And so when you think about it, we we will always find the next thing that we want. And when you, when you think about this, um, you know, when you think about kids, they're the same way. I literally was in the car recently closing on a house, um, and my, my, my son, and it's, it, it's a car, it's a car closing. Like you don't even go in. They just come to the car and bring you papers. Everybody, you stay in the wow. car. And so, um, one of my boys, we're in the car, it's been an hour and a half. We're just signing papers, signing papers. And one of my boys, of course, he's bored and he sticks his foot in the middle of the, the first, uh, the first two seats on the, the, the passenger side, the driver's side. And he goes, mom, look. When are you going to give me some shoes? My shoes are horrible. And I just, in that moment, I thought, are you kidding me? I turned around, I looked at him and I just said, we're buying you a house. And I just turned back around. And then I, later on, I said, you know what? No matter what y'all have to say to me, I'm hungry. I need a shoe. My phone needs a battery. Mom, when are we going to go on vacation? When is a haircut? The answer to that question for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> We bought you. We bought, you, we bought a house. You we bought a house because I need it. Yeah. Of course, as an adult, right? I understand all the sacrifice that's going into this, all the things that we have um, worked hard to do. And the reality is, they have a different perspective. And I said, I want you to think every time you want to complain or every time you want to tell me what you want to remind yourself of what we've done for our family, what we've done that Amen. blesses you, because you will forget. Because you're going to be con- become consumed as a child with the next thing that glitters and glistens in front of you. The next video game, the next party with a friend, the next thing. And so what I was telling them in essence to do is what God tells us, which is, hey, I'm going to need you to be intentional about remembering the big picture. The big picture is I sent my only son to die a horrific death for your benefit so that when your physical house disintegrates, the core of you actually can live forever with me. So if you didn't get the job you wanted, keep the big picture. If you didn't get the man you wanted, keep the big picture. Oh my goodness, if the storm came by and messed up your house, keep the big picture. If something goes wrong with your health, keep the big picture. And I feel like what God is telling us is always what I'm telling my kids. Oh my gosh, keep the big picture. It is not all about you right now. And so the decision to praise God for what he's done, and Jesus is always the win. That's always the thing that we can go back to helps us to maintain a grateful posture, a thankful perspective, and can keep us in fellowship with him. Somebody give me an amen. We have people who text an amen when somebody (laughs) preaches. I need some amens, friends. Come on right now, 877-933-2484 as we go to break. You know, it made me think my boys are grown now as well, but well, my years aren't yet. You got two grown daughters, but um, when they were in college, I would say, as long as we're paying for stuff, 
we still get to say stuff. You got that <laughs> like right. Our opinion matters. <laughs> Talking to my friend Crystal Evans Hurst, she's got a great book, The 28 Day Prayer Journey, A Daily Guide to Conversations with God. It's just an easy, fresh angle on how to just orchestrate your prayer life. Leanne gave me an amen. I knew I could count on her. If you want in on the drawing, just text the word book to 877 933 2484. So the first day of the week, Monday, is a day to praise and to give gratitude to God. We're going to talk about a few more examples on what that looks like before we move on to uh, Tuesday, which is repentance. And Mary Jane, Kathy, knew I could count on you. We'll be back in a minute. Do you want to transform your life? Then read the Bible. Hi, I'm Angela, host of Reading the Bible Together. And maybe you're thinking, that's great, but where do I start? We have great study guides and podcasts on a bunch of different studies from Reading the Bible Together. You can find all the information, get the free study guide, listen to the free podcast, find it all at MyFaithRadio.com. Just look for Reading the Bible Together resource page. You know, the Bible says that the prayer of the righteous accomplishes great and powerful things. You want to see great and powerful things happen in your life, in the lives of those you love, in your world, in your city, in your nation. If there was ever a day and a time where we needed to see great and powerful works of God, it is now. That means we are called to an active, engaged prayer life, an intimate walk with God. And that's why we're here. Thanks for tuning into Susie Larson Live, talking to my friend Crystal Evans Hurst, who's written a great book on prayer, The 28 Day Prayer Journey, a daily guide to conversations with God. And it's so, she makes it so easy and that she lays it out. And in a really cool daily way. Monday is the day of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. We're still on that point, gratitude to God. And and as she said, when you're in these seasons where things aren't working out, step back and see the big picture. God, Jesus has gone away to prepare a place for you, that he gave his life for you. There's an eternity that awaits you. Life on earth is short. Eternity is long. Keep the big picture. In fact, I love this. You write, Crystal, when we praise God, we adore him for who he is. When we thank God, we express our gratitude for what he's done. Rather than beginning with ourselves, Our prayers of praise begin with God. If God never did another thing for us, these are the reasons we'd still love, admire, and honor him. You can uh, enter the drawing. We've got a good stack to give away. Text the word book to 877-933-2484. So you break this out in a way where you return to Monday a few different times and give some other examples of what praise might look like for his spiritual gifts, physical gifts, that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Well, you can praise him every morning that you wake up, (laughs) um, that he kept your body going. Um, we take that for granted. We just assume we're going to go to sleep and wake up the way we went, where we went to sleep. And that is not always the case. Um, we can thank him for the opportunity <clears throat> to engage with God spiritually, that we're not just physical or even soulful beings, emotional or mental. We are spirit filled and the opportunity to engage with the God of the universe, knowing that the Holy Spirit lives in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that is an awesome privilege to thank him for that. Um, when you think about I mean, when I grew up in church, people would say, I want to thank God for waking up, uh, you know, clothed in my right mind, that you are able to attack your day mentally. And I know some, some of us are struggling with anxiety and struggling with um, stress and struggling with burden. But the fact that you are able to continue is something to be grateful for. If you do the opposite and say, well, because of all the things that are wrong in my life, I'm going to focus on them. I'm going to rehearse them. You can do that. It just doesn't help you to move. It doesn't help you to move in the direction uh, of, of, of what gratitude and thanksgiving will. And so just looking at the global person, who you are physically, spiritually, emo- emotionally, mentally, and thanking God through each one of those parts of your humanity, because it is God who has created you and who keeps you going. Amen. This dear listener wrote in, my husband had a massive heart attack 11 years ago and has struggled with very little sleep each night since. That is a long time to battle sleeplessness. I can't Mm -hmm. even imagine. I wonder if, uh, Crystal, you just pray for that dear listener. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, I just thank you that you have given us everything that we need. I know it doesn't always feel like that. Life is hard. It's too much. Blow after blow comes and the unexpected arrests us. And we're left wondering if you see, if you hear, and if you care. Lord, I just thank you that you do care. And I pray for my dear sister who is, you know, has just got a lot on her plate. and Life hasn't been easy. I pray that even in the darkest of times that she would know you, come to know you in a way that she has never known you before. And that even in the darkest of times that this would be a time where she is building and sharing uh, and having available <clears throat> to share with other people a testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. 
Father, I pray for the husband who can't sleep and has gone 11 mm-hmm. years without sleep. We pray, God, that you'd give him that gift. As you say in your word, you grant sleep to those you love. We know you love him. So whatever is hindering that, any body chemistry, help them discover it. Help them to know if there's anything at all uh, that, that, uh, that's missing in his uh, chemical um, communication in his body. But I just pray deep and abiding sleep and healing for him in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So Mondays are days to praise and thanksgiving. And I wonder if Mondays end up being some of the best days of the week, because when you enter in, God inhabits the praises of his people. And when you enter in with gratitude, it is amazing what it does for your perspective. So I bet people who are doing this come to love Mondays. Tuesdays uh, is repent. And I love this. You said, take a moment to ask God where you're not right in right standing with him. Don't rush through it. Ask him to show you where there's a disconnect between what he wants for you and how you're living. Then sit for a few minutes and listen to him. You'll be surprised by what he wants to say to you when you give him a few minutes to talk. Say more about this one, Crystal. Well, you know, the thing is, again, I think about any relationship. And if you don't, um, you know, if you're not willing to say, Hey, you know, there's a breach here. I want to, I want to repair that. Hey, I want to, I want to talk to you about what's concerning me or what, uh, what I really haven't been wanting to talk to you about. Then there's not much a relationship prayer. All it is, is just communication with God, but the same kind of communication you would expect to have with somebody who you care about. And just like if you have a great husband and you are praising him for all the wonderful things he's done and thanking for him for, uh, who he is and, and what he means to you. If there's ever been a moment where um, you haven't seen eye to eye and you don't, you're not willing to talk about that, then you're not, you're missing an opportunity rather to build into the relationship by saying, Hey, this offended me or, Hey, I'm sorry, I offended you. And it's an opportunity to clear the air, talk to the elephant in the room, acknowledge where something's not quite right. So you can get back to being together. That's the, that's the goal of repentance is to say, what do we need to do to switch things around so we can get back to being together? It's a gift to repent because that means repair, repairing relationship is, is possible. Beautiful. You know, there's some who believe as Christians, and I'm sure you've heard this as well, that once you are in Christ, there's no need for repentance. And I just, I wholeheartedly disagree. We don't repent for salvation once we're saved, but we do, as you say, repent for the relationship's sake. And I think if you forsake repentance, you're also forsaking times of refreshing because there's something so potent and powerful about coming to God humbly, or even like you said, going to a spouse or a friend to say, I want to rebuild this thing. Then intimacy, that's when intimacy is greatest, isn't it? That's correct. That's correct. I mean, we are allowing ourselves to be vulnerable um, and vulnerable. Vulnerability breeds intimacy. If you are walking into a situation protective and defensive, you will feel safe, but you won't be known. And really, in the long run, um, safe, if you're not known, will breed loneliness and separation. And that's no way to live. Wow. Wow. Say that again. I don't know if I can. <laughs> oh, my word. That was fantastic. If you go into a relationship with, where your goal is safety, you won't be known. Oh, and you might end up safe, but you're going to be lonely. That's Someone yeah. needed to hear that today. Wow, that's fantastic. we got to pause here for our break. But this was a good time to tell you guys. Uh, we've been talking about this behind the scenes, and I brought it up yesterday's show. I want to do a show on repentance, but I wanted to know, would you participate? It would be a songs and verses. So we'll play some songs read some scripture on repentance and every text and every call would be anonymous. But instead of shaking our fist at the darkness, instead of blaming everybody else for our problems and the world's problems, what if it starts with us? Because that's what Jesus said. You know, if my people will humble themselves and pray, I will hear from heaven and heal their land. Our land needs healing. So how about if it starts with us? So we're planning that for the future, and I'm praying that you will participate. I'm talking to Crystal Evans Hurst about her amazing book, The 28-Day Prayer Journey. We've got a stack of copies to give away. If you want in on the drawing, it's very easy. Text the word book to 877-933-2484. We're going to get some examples on prayers of repentance. On, that's the Tuesday prayer, and then we'll move on from there. We'll be back in a minute. Thanks for tuning in to Susie Larson Live, having a great conversation with my friend Crystal Evans Hurst, who's got a new book out today, The 28-Day Prayer Journey, A Daily Guide to Conversations with God. We've got a good stack to give away if you want uh, just a fresh 
insight, a fresh uh, kind of format for your prayer that's very, your prayer life, that's just easy to follow and very guided. It's powerful. Text the word book to 877-933-2484. So Mondays are days of prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, and there's just countless things to thank God for. So imagine spending your Monday, your first day, you know, of your work week, whatever, just being a constant state of thanking God because there's just looking around for the blessings you enjoy and thanking him for who he is. Tuesday is the day of repentance. And uh, what a powerful thing you said before the break, Crystal, that if you go into any relationship and your purpose is to be safe but not known, you're going to end up being alone and feeling alone. And repentance is not something we should fear. It's something we should absolutely embrace. What would it look like on, on Tuesdays when your heart is bent towards repentance? Tell me, give us an example of what that looks like. Well, I think the first thing is that you're looking to please God. You're desiring fellowship with God, meaning that you're um, uh, attentive to the things that you would do, that the Holy Spirit, you're sensitive to the Holy Spirit in you. Um, when there's something that you're doing, saying, thinking that doesn't please God, that there's a sensitivity, a desire to see when you've breached relationship, because it's so important to you to keep those uh, lines of communication open with him. And so the first thing is, is you're looking for it. You don't assume that you're right. You assume that he's right because he's the only one that's perfect. And you're saying not, not, you know, from a punishment standpoint, but, uh, have I pleased you today? You know, is it, is it, uh, have I done a good job <laughs> representing you today? How do you want me to recognize um, what sanctification looks like or how you want me to grow up in you today? And when he brings those things to your remembrance or to your attention, it's for you to say, I'm I'm sorry. Thank you <laughs> for showing me how I'm not like you and how I can become more like you and give me the power and the strength to do that tomorrow. It, it's basically me coming to my husband and saying, you know, I'm sorry. I said this that way. I did not intend to uh, be offensive. I can obviously tell what I said did not sit well with you. Please know that wasn't my intent. And uh, I, I apologize. And the next time I, I say this certain thing, I'll make sure I say it a different way. It's it's the goal to disarm somebody when you're dealing with another human person. But in the, in the situation where you're dealing with God, it's to let him know you're disarming yourself. I'm not being defensive. I'm not being prideful. I'm not being disobedient. I'm not being obstinate. I want to be soft and malleable, clay in the potter's hand so that you can make me into what you want me to be. And me being able to say, I'm sorry, and to be humble enough to ask for forgiveness is a part of that. Indeed. You know, I'm thinking as you're talking, anything done apart from faith is sin. That's a pretty strong verse, but it's in the scripture. And for me, when I look at my bent towards self-preservation, my bent towards just with health challenges, I know your husband probably understands this too. It's like if I cross the line, I pay a big price. So the living in the tension of of wise self-care and selfish self-protection, I, I feel that tension all the time. And there are times when he's asking me for sacrifice. And if there's not faith there because I'm choosing unbelief, that I need to deal with that with God. So it's like if you look at the things that are when you could have chosen faith, but you chose self-preservation, selfishness, it might just be something to look at. But wasn't it so beautiful that when you come to God in repentance, you will find a heavenly father who loves you with open arms. That That is profound. He's not a punitive God, you know? No, and that's the beautiful thing. Our repentance is for our good. It's not for him to say, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> right, right, he, right. He, des he desires fellowship. I mean, we go back to Jesus and his sacrifice for our sins. There was a big price paid so that we could even have the opportunity to talk to him. So his goal is not to beat us down, make us feel small and little, and to and to um, and and to just send us off and you know running away from him. His goal is to draw us close to him, to make us know that he loves us. The Bible says we love God because he first loved us. It is his desire to make sure that we are not doing anything that would get in our way from him giving us everything he designed to give to us. Mm -hmm. um, and when we sin, we get in the way of that. Amen. All right. Wednesday is ask. I love this. Know that when you pray, God hears more than you say, answers more than you ask, and gives more than you can imagine in his time and in his way. We're walking through the prayer acronym. So Monday is praise. Tuesday is repent. Now here we are on Wednesday. Ask. Say more about that. 
Well, that's the part, uh, you know, that we always don't have to say too much about because that's usually why we come to God. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's something we want. God, can you, can you be Santa Claus in the sky? Can you be the Jack in the box? Can you um, give me what I desire? And we're so disappointed when he doesn't um, because we assume that he's withholding something from us. But the Bible says that God is a father who gives good gifts to his children. And if that's the case, then his no is because he's still saying yes to something else, something else we may know nothing about, something else we may not understand, something else we may not even know that we need. But the reality is he's a good father who, if he did not withhold his own son. How much more would he give to those who ask? So if we ask and he doesn't give, then there's a reason. There's a reason. Mm -hmm. And we see this again all the time as we parent our children. They ask for things and they have no idea how what they're asking for is going to set them up maybe for failure or to feed into something that later they'll realize, oh, I wish my mom had stopped me from doing this or told me this. But in the moment as children, they just want what they want. It is so beautiful when you have a child and some of y'all have experienced this where you have a child and they ask for something and you tell them no. And their response is, you know, okay, well, I'm sure you have a reason. You'd look at that kid and think, what kind of a child is this? I mean, you know, because (laughs) the assumption is that if my mother says no, if my dad says no, they're getting in the way of my fun. They're getting in the way of me having life experience. They're getting in the way of the things that, you know, generationally don't make sense to them, but they totally make sense to me. They're in the way. When in reality, their goal in saying no is to probably protect you, to set you up for success and to not be in the way at all. But perspective is everything. So Hmm. we should ask and ask freely because the Bible tells us to. um, Don't ask out of fear that you won't get it because if some some things based on God's conditional will, um, he only does if we ask. And so um, you want to do your part. Seek um, and you will find, the Bible says. So there's some things you don't find unless you seek. That said, when we ask, we trust and we humbly back away and say, here's my request. But to your glory, to your honor, to the good of what you're doing in mankind, God, let my request be made subject to what you're doing overall. Amen. Amen. And I love how in the book you move us from self-focus to to the greater good, to the people around us, to the bigger kingdom story God's writing. And I love the quote you referenced from Pastor Dave Willis, who asks, if God answered all of your prayers, would the world look different or just your life? Wow. Say more about that. Isn't that a great quote? Mm. You know, the thing is, we um, want what we want, and we usually want it for our benefit. But what if we saw our communication with God, our prayer time with God, as an opportunity to participate um, with God and what he wants to do for other people? What if the power that we have to pray is so that God's glory can be made known, not just in our lives, but in the lives of other people? What if our participation with um, other people in our prayers sets us up to see more prayers answered? Because while he may not bat 100 for us for everything we pray, what if we spread that around so we get to see what God is doing apart from just us? It's an opportunity to see God at work in your life and in the life of other people. And honestly, you up the odds the more people you pray for. Indeed, indeed. You know, one of the specific prayers I prayed for years, we still pray for our military and their families, but I had a very specific prayer that faith would spread like wildfire through the troops that because they're, they're putting themselves in harm's way, but that they would be just divinely in touch with God's love, his provision and his desire to have a relationship with him. And probably two years into praying that very specifically, I ran into a woman I hadn't seen in years and she said to me, she just had the sweetest smile on her face. And she said, my son is in the military. She goes, Susie, you wouldn't believe it. She said, faith is spreading like wildfire through the, with the troops. And she word for word said what I'd been praying for two years. And I just thought it was so sweet of God because I prayed so specifically for him to show me that my very specific prayer was being specifically answered. Uh, he just wants so much to invite us into the big story, doesn't he? He does. He does. And prayer is our way to participate, to be an active participant in what he's doing and how he wants to use us in the accomplishment of his purposes. Love that. Okay. So again, Monday is praise and thanksgiving. Tuesday is repent. Wednesday is ask. Be audacious in what you ask for. Again, our dreams are often too small. Ask for others as well. Ask for your city. You know, seek the prosperity of your city. Okay, here we are on Thursday, and it's yield. And I want to read this. You said, take a moment and think of where God has been convicting you, nudging you, or speaking to you. What has been coming to your mind and your heart frequently this week? What steps do you need? Do you sense you need to take? Where in your life do you need to surrender to God's plan? Say more if you would. Well, the thing is, after we've prayed, 
And after we've praised and after we've repented, the goal is to land in the place where we are willing to go along with whatever God is doing. We, we want to praise him because we trust that he knows what he's doing. We want to thank him that in the past, maybe in our lives, we've seen he knows what he's doing. We want to repent because we want to keep the lines of communication open, knowing that his word is truth and that, um, that when we're obedient, we are blessed. And then we ask because we want to see him at work in our lives. It all goes back to we want to engage with God and be a part of what he is doing. Yielding is saying, now that I've said everything I have to say, everything that I think I want you to do, everything that I think I need you to do, I've laid it all out there. I trust that you, you're you actually God and you can do what I need, what I want, but I have to release those needs and wants for me and for others to you, for you to decide how those needs get met and when, and I trust you. That's ultimately what, what yielding says, surrendering says, you know what? I trust you. I've laid all, all these things out of my mind and out of my heart, but at the end of the day, here I am, and wherever you lead, I'll follow. God loves to work with people who are willing, 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 willing to be a part of what he's doing. And when we consciously yield, surrender, and say, whatever you want, Lord, then that brings you into that space. Don't you think that's a place where peace happens? I mean, I think we lose our peace when we white knuckle and hang on too tight and try to bend God's will towards ours, which, you know, doesn't work. But I think to release and open up our hands and to say, you all, you have, I have a history with you, God. You've been so faithful. I have a future with you. I can trust you. And releasing, something happens, I think, in our souls. And I love this. You said, what does trusting in God actually look like in your life? What would you do differently if you chose to rely on God to do the heavy lifting? Breathe deeply. Take a chance on him. What's your first step if you believe that he's good and that he's got everything under control? It's okay if your heart is beating a little faster. Feet don't have to follow feelings, but they should always follow the Father. We're going to pause here. When we come back, we're digging into Friday, which is family and friends. So we've walked through the prayer, the pray acronym, praise ask, or sorry, pray, repent, ask, yield. And now we're on day Friday where we pray for family and friends. We'll talk more about that with Crystal Evans Hurst in a moment. We got a good stack of Crystal's new book to give away, The 28-Day Prayer Journey, a daily guide to conversations with God. It's just so easy to follow. It's wonderful. Text the word book if you want in on the drawing and text us a prayer request if we can stand with you. 877-933-2484. We'll be back in a minute. This is Suzy Larson, host of Suzy Larson Live. I don't know about you, but I love consistent nourishment. I love to fast on occasion. There's a purpose in that. But if you go too long without eating on a regular basis because you're too busy, your body actually goes into crisis mode. Well, in the same way, your soul, your spirit, they need nourishment too. And that's why it's so important to be listening to scripture, listening to good teaching on a consistent basis throughout the day. That's why we're here. We love what we do, and we want to do it with you. If you listen on our on the radio, on the terrestrial signal, we encourage you, download our free faith radio app. That way, if you're traveling this season, you can take us with you wherever you go. You can catch the live shows or even the podcast after the fact. And we've made it easier than ever. All you have to do is text the word app to 877-933-2484 and then click the link. I hope you will walk with us on this journey. Greater things are yet to be done in and all around us because God, well, he's on the move. Thanks so much for tuning in to Susie Larson Live, talking to Crystal Evans Hurst, who's got a brand new book out today, The 28-Day Prayer Journey, A Daily Guide to Conversations with God. We've been having a fantastic conversation. If you're late to the party, welcome. We're giving away a good stack of these uh, the copies of this book. You can text the word book to 877-933-2484. So we're walking through this prayer acronym to start with. So Monday, Monday is praise, where you praise God. There's lots of to be thankful for. And if you spent every Monday looking around for things that you would miss if they went away the next day, thank him for it. You know, a refrigerator that works, a roof over your head, clothes in your closet, people that love you. Every Monday, praise and thanksgiving, gratitude to God, sending his son. Tuesday is repent, where you seek forgiveness, where you have a sensitive spirit and you walk around and you're listening for the convicting work of the Holy Spirit and you make it right with God because he loves you. And Wednesday, you ask, you present your request to God. And Thursday, you yield after you've done the work of 
of repentance, of praise and thanksgiving and asking, then you just surrender your will to him and you yield to what he says. Before we get to Friday, which is family and friends, and Saturday is a Saturday challenge, and Sunday is Sabbath prayers, and I know we're coming up to the end here, uh, but this dear listener wants to know, do we praise using scripture or find adjectives in the dictionary? Um, just as far as worshiping God and telling him what we think about him. What do you say, Crystal? Well, I think that, you know, in this season where we are all uh, stressed out and we are trying so hard to make it through, I think that the reality is continuing to pray and praying consistently is the thing that, it, let me back up. When I thought about my grandmother and I thought about how she prayed consistently, she had this prayer journal and she would um, ask me, how's this prayer request? And I would say, oh yeah, that one's taken care of. And she would say, well, you have to tell me so I can cross it off my list, you know? And her whole journey of praying was consistent. That was the mark, a hallmark of her life. It was the hallmark of her steadiness in her marriage, in her family. And when we think about this importance and how, you know, the world can be distracting and it can kind of get in the way and interrupt us, making it a priority and, um, and being consistent so that we have that lifeline to God ongoingly is crucial, but it does take discipline, you know, which is why we put some of these prayers in this book and some of these prompts to say, Hey, this is a lifeline. This is a lifeline to God. This is a lifeline to your everyday. This is a lifeline for you to be connected to what's happening in the spiritual. And, um, it's worth prioritizing. It's worth making room for, and it's worth having this ongoing connection with the God who made you. Amen. And to this dear listener, I think you do both. I think as you read scripture and you see, you know, different passages that just describe who God is and how he is and how Jesus is, just pause and say, Jesus, thank you that you're like that, that you confronted the world's mm-hmm. bullies and you stood up for the person who is at the bottom of the pile. Thank you so much for being that kind of king. And maybe you see a word in the dictionary that that describes who God's been to me. I think you just go, you just be organic with it. Don't you think, Crystal? I mean, I find myself pausing in Scripture going, that describes who God has been to me perfectly. I need to pause here. Uh, but there are also words, you know, I mean, I see like in the sky, the heavens declare the glories of God, you know, when you see a sunrise or sunset, it reminds me of the character and creativity of God. What about you? Yeah. And, and the thing is, is one of the, one of the best helps for this consistency and looking for words is Scripture. I mean, one of the things that has helped me the most is just picking up the Psalms and just reading them so that I don't have to think of what to say. And so that the words are given to me. And so that I'm joining in, not just with what David wrote or the other Psalmist wrote, but what people have been praying to God for thousands of years, using these shared words to remind us of what we can see, maybe when we can't see it on our own. So good. Okay, Friday is family and friends. And I want to talk about the enemy's aim to steal, kill, and destroy. I love this. You said, you must realize that if the enemy has a bold strategy to overpower you, well, then you should use your fervent prayers as a bold strategic weapon to overcome and have the victory through Christ Jesus. Be a fierce warrior by fighting for your family in prayer. I love that because it's like the enemy shouldn't be putting more effort into destroying our family than, than we are into guarding our family. Yeah, we... We have to know that prayer is a weapon. It is an offensive weapon. It is something that we can do to war for the people that we love um, in spiritual places. And when I know I I have adult children and I know that there is a certain season sometimes where they're just not listening to you like you'd like for them to. And if they would just listen to me, their (laughs) life would be so much better. But there are so many things that while I can't get them to move on my word, I can ask God to move in their heart and I can pray and say whatever I need to say to God as much as I need to say and treat that like, like battle, keeping, uh, keeping on, keeping on showing up when, um, I would rather give my words to my, to my children. Sometimes the rather turns into, I'd rather give them to God simply because I've seen what he can do with their hearts when I can't do it with my words. Ah, somebody's got to give me another amen. Amen, amen. That's fantastic. All right, so Saturday challenge. And is the Saturday challenge different each Saturday through the 28-day prayer challenge? Yes, it is. We want you to look at the opportunities to pray with a fresh fresh look, with fresh vision, and to see that all of the opportunities that you have around you to pray, um, you may not have been taking, taking advantage of. You've been praying for yourself, praying for the people you love. 
Um, my boys and I, the other day, I realized that it's a tradition. I didn't mean for it to be. I just wanted them to develop a sensitivity. But when we pass an accident on the freeway, when we're stuck in traffic and the first thought is we're frustrated because we're sitting here, we can't go anywhere. But then we pass and we see the car and we see that somebody was hurt or we see the damage to the vehicle. I tell, it's not knee jerk now. I say to the boys, okay, who's going to pray? And, you know, then we start praying for that person and for their health and for their family and for their fears. And that is something that is not a part of that. Now I lay me down to sleep prayer. You know, that is a I'm in motion and I want to engage God in the things that are engaging my world. And that's what the Saturday challenges are all about. It's engaging with your world in ways that are maybe a little unique, maybe you hadn't thought about, but hopefully get you thinking about the the um, the ability that prayer has to be pervasive in your life. I love in the beginning you talked about just the out of the box nature of the challenge where you dare to uh, at the grocery store as you're checking out. How can I be praying for you? I mean, that I, I've heard that most people respond favorably to that. You might get a few who are irritated, but in fact, deep inside, I would imagine they're still blessed by it. But the idea of of sowing seeds in the needs all around you. I love the idea of the challenge because, again, right away it takes the focus off of you and puts it out out there. I think that's fantastic. I love this in the Saturday challenge. You said you can let go and wait on God for his intervention in the lives of your neighbors. You can see striving to fix things yourself and watch God work things out for you. You can relax and let him fight for souls. So while you're asking, sow seeds into your neighbors, be available, anticipate their needs, and go meet some of those needs. You also said in the book, it doesn't mean I'm asking you or telling you to be their savior. Their, their souls are in God's hands, but anticipate some needs because, again, we live so self-focused lives. Let's say a word about that. Well, I think we miss such a wonderful opportunity. Um, Larry Moyer uh, of Evangel Ministries, I heard him preach a sermon one time, um, and the whole thing was, how to share the love of Jesus simply by asking people, can I pray for you? Because it's just what you said. People may not want you to go ahead and go full on into a gospel presentation. However, if you say, hey, can I pray for you? You know, I'm just going to be talking to God over the next week and wanted to remember some of my neighbors. How, how can I pray for you? What's going on? Nobody refuses that. I've yet to have anybody refuse that. Um, because, of course, if you're going to... <laughs> To talk to me, talk, talk to God about me and in a good way, please. Yes, help me out. Um, and that idea to show up and be a good neighbor and to pray for your neighbors, even if you don't have the kind of relationship with your neighbors that you like, um, that is a wonderful opportunity to show that you care. It's also a wonderful opportunity for you to get to know them because you never know once you ask that question, what they might say, where they're struggling. And also it gives you a reason to connect with them beyond, you know, what kind of lawnmower do you use for your grass? It gives you something that is deeper and more meaningful and personable than a lot of things that we connect with, um, with our neighbors. It's actually saying, how are you? And how can I talk to God about you? And it's a wonderful opportunity to grow community. I love the juxtaposition of you're not their savior trust God to draw their souls to him. But anticipate needs uh, because we tend to, mm -hmm. I think, vacillate to one of those two extremes, either trying to see them as a project, get them saved, and they're going to start avoiding you after a while if they feel like you have an agenda for their lives, right? Or just being so uh, careful that you don't intervene at all. So the idea to anticipate needs, ask God for insight into needs, meet some of those needs, but then trust God to do the saving. I just think that's a really healthy balanced way to look at it. Okay, we made it to Sunday. We've got a couple uh, minutes left. We're doing pretty well. Sabbath prayers. I mean, you talked about this at the beginning of the show, but you say today we're supporting the body of Christ by praying for our pastors and others in the community of faith. Unpack that a little bit more. Well, you know, we know that, you know, we hear sometimes we should pray for our pastor, but, you know, the people who are listening to the radio show right now, it's like, okay, Susie and her guests, they feed me. You know, if I listen to, um, uh, a, a music artist, or if I listen to uh, a person, another person on the radio on a podcast, they are pouring into my spiritual life. So how can I pray for them? How can I pray for their ministries? How can I pray for their families? How can I pray for the resistance that they need to fight off the schemes of the enemy? How can I do that? Because 
it's not just my pastor. And we want to focus on our pastor, pastoral staff, the people who keep my kids in the church nursery. But our spiritual community, especially when you start talking about the spiritual community that feeds us, is a lot bigger sometimes for many of us than who preaches to us on Sunday morning. So we certainly include our pastors. But on, on the Sunday, we try to think about our faith journey, our faith community, and who's in it and how we can pray for them. Well, I think that's fantastic. Well, one last question for you, Crystal. This has been so great. What would you say you know about God now that you didn't know five, ten years ago? Hmm. What did I not know about God? That I, what I know now about God that I didn't know five to ten years ago? Hmm. That he delights in answering our prayers and giving us things that we ask for when it, when he can, and when it fits in his overarching Mm. plan. I'm, I'm, I'm always amazed at how something that I might've prayed for 15 years ago and never kept praying about it. He heard it. That's right. And in some way he shows up and says, Hey, just so you know, I'm thinking about you. It's amazing. (laughs) Fantastic. Psalm 84 says he withholds no good thing from those who walk uprightly. Crystal, we sure love you. Appreciate the time. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to sow into our listeners. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, dear listener, for tuning in. And we'll leave the uh, drawing opening for a little bit more for Crystal Evans Hurst's book, The 28-Day Prayer Journey. Text the word book and we'll get you in the drawing. Have a great day. We'll meet you back here next time. Thanks for listening to this Susie Larson Live podcast. These conversations are available because of listener support. You can become a supporter today at MyFaithRadio.com. To avoid missing future editions of the show, you can subscribe to the podcast now at Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast player. And thanks for sharing this audio link to spread the good news of the gospel and to grow the impact of the show. Thanks for listening to Susie Larson Live.